Hi everyone, my name is Spencer Wilkinson and I'm the director of the documentary Alice Street. We're honored to be included in this year's KDOCS Film Festival and grateful to the organizers and team who put it on each year. Um, and to you, the audience who came out in the midst of snowstorms and slushy streets, mm -hmm. give yourselves a round of applause. Mm -hmm. We appreciate it. Um, it's truly amazing to be part of this festival that has such a track record of lifting up beautiful stories like the ones we just saw of social justice and activism globally. Along with the featured uh, muralists in the film, Pancho Pescador and Desi Mundo, I, I traveled here from my home in Oakland, California. To give you some background, Oakland is the ancestral home of the Ohlone Ramatush people and located just across the bay from San Francisco. Oakland is also mostly known as the birthplace for the Black Panther Party and many other social justice movements and artists that have had global impact. It's one of the most ethnically diverse cities in the US with over 125 languages spoken. It's also a city that is going through tremendous changes due to gentrification, because of the proximity to the tech empires of San Francisco and Silicon Valley, Oakland is experiencing ballooning rent increases, displacement of longtime residents, and pervasive homelessness. The changes are creating a landscape of contrasting lifestyles and a palpable tension of a widening class divide. Historically, the city has been divided. There's the hills versus the flats, an economically booming downtown contrasts with the neglected outer neighborhoods in East and West Oakland. African American, Asian American, and Latino communities were excluded from being able to purchase homes and create businesses in many parts of the city until the 1960s. West Oakland's 7th Street was a hub for the black community until the city tore up the neighborhood to build a mass transit system and the main post office. Oakland's Chinatown was uprooted several times since its founding in the 1850s. And neither of these examples were accidents. Urban planning initiatives disrupted communities. In the midst of rampant housing and employment discrimination, cultural communities created their own thriving neighborhoods. But now, in 2023, the same communities that contributed to the city's deep influence on popular art and social mo justice movements globally are again under threat of displacement due to market forces and lack of city policy to protect them. The city has also not engaged those neighborhoods to develop plans that reflect the real needs of their communities. But folks are not sitting down, they're standing up. And this is the backdrop behind the story of Alice Street. Usually, conversations about gentrification are focused on large-scale market forces, statistics about rising rents, and the changing demographics of cities. It's rare that we can hear a more intimate and direct perspective from cultural communities. And with Alice Street, we focused on a single intersection in downtown Oakland to illuminate the real impacts of gentrification as well as the power of art and organizing to resist it. Since Alice Street's premiere in 2020, we've been connecting with cities throughout the US and Canada to organize social impact events with the film, where it, the film can be used to spark dialogue and action. And what I'm now coming to understand is that the story of Oakland and Alice Street is not unique. Every city seemingly has its own similar story. And I wonder for you, those of you from Vancouver, you know, what is your Alice Street? Along with larger cities like Los Angeles, New York, uh, DC, Chicago, and Toronto, the film has also sparked dialogue in smaller communities that are being impacted by large scale migrations over the last couple of years due to the COVID pandemic. Displacement and increased homelessness are no longer only urban coastal issues. And this is also the power 
and the need for the narrative to find common ground. Storytelling and films don't necessarily need to be bound to theaters and film festivals. They can provide a unifying foundation to build upon, a table to set and eat around, to find a common language and a plan for action. And this is how we've come to define in our project uh, impact. Today is a special day because it represents the culmination of two years of collaboration, as Janice was mentioning, um, and sharing ideas between Oakland and Vancouver. We were honored to be part of the virtual KDOX Festival last year and inspired by the dialogue with council member Jean Swanson and artist Brandon Gabriel. Soon after last year's KDOX Festival, I reached out to Janice Morris to share that we were interested in including Vancouver in our social impact tour. She introduced us to the heart of the City Festival in downtown Eastside, and Desi Mundo, uh, one of the mural artists, and myself were able to attend. It blew our minds to hear about the work happening in Vancouver to create affordable housing and stories about the compassionate approach to addiction and homelessness here. We saw many parallels between our two communities. And right now, at this moment, a momentous collaboration is taking place between Poncho, Desi, and Brandon. Hey, Brandon. Um, uh, at a, on a mural in the Kwantlen uh, Polytechnic University campus. This again shows the power of narrative and of deep and authentic community engagement for the creation of public art, as well as urban design, as well as documentary film. It's the same process that informed the making of Alice Street. And we see this moment in time with you all as an ongoing process of community engagement that began almost a decade ago when we started filming uh, Alice Street. It's an honor to be here with our Canadian brothers and sisters across the border, and we look forward to continuing to create our shared story.